Merry Christmas. And uh, thanks for joining us on this Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, here at the Village, uh, we've been approaching Advent with a little different perspective this year. We've been using that uh, cult classic Christmas movie, uh, Christmas Vacation. And uh, we've been kind of looking at the way that the Griswolds, at least Clark, looks at the season and then spending a little bit of time uh, maybe, maybe correcting that in one sense and, and from a Christian perspective. So, so we looked at some of the things that Clark thought was important this uh, Christmas season. We looked at the perfect tree, we looked at the perfect lights, we looked at the perfect family, and then tonight we're going to tackle the topic of the perfect gift. Now, now, I don't know if you've ever had something like this, but probably at least some time in your life you have. You've had this, uh, this idea of something that if you could have it, it would change your life. I mean, if you could get a hold of this, if, if somebody would give it to you, or it could be yours, man, it would change your life. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Christmas Vacation, but our main character, Clark Griswold, man, he had a gift that he believed would transform his life if he could get a hold of it. And that was a built-in swimming pool. I mean, he thought, this is going to change my life. And he had a model in his office that he kept looking at and showing others. And, and, and even at one point, he was looking out the back window, and he was imagining the pool right there in his backyard. And all of the changes that would happen to him if he could get a hold of this pool, if this pool could become a reality for him. Like, like one thing is, is he believed that the pool would change his level of happiness. That man, he could be all of a sudden content because he had gotten this built-in swimming pool. He believed it would change all of his family relationships. You know, that, 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 that as he looked out, he saw his family there laughing and enjoying each other and having a great time. In fact, it increased his popularity level. I mean, man, there, was, there, there were friends over. There were distant relatives. I mean, even, even Cousin Eddie was over, and it was okay. Everybody was having a great time. And, and then, in some sort of weird way, it even increased his personal attractiveness. I mean, he became better looking if he could have this built-in swimming pool. I mean, I mean, many of us in our life at some point, we've had something like that. We've had something that we say, man, if I could get a hold of this, it would transform my life. If, if I could get the, get the next promotion at work, if I could uh, achieve a certain income level, if, if, if I could get this person to fall in love with me, if I, could, if I could join this vacation club, if I could, you name it. I mean, whatever it is that we think that would transform our lives. Well, you know, for me, about 18 years ago, maybe, that's right about then, about 18 years ago, I was walking through a mall in Wichita, Kansas. And I was just taking my, my first lap around, and, and I went by a mall kiosk. And you know how mall kiosks are, right? I mean, you know, somebody's there at the mall, and they're at the kiosk, and when you walk by, they're like, hey, try this hand lotion. Hey, try this perfume. Hey, try these contact lenses. Hey, try this, this, this hair extension. I mean, whatever it is, you know, they're always wanting you to try it. And Anyhow, I was making my first lap around the mall of one that I assumed was going to be about 40, because my wife was with me and she was shopping. And so I figured I'm going to lap here for quite a while. But, but nevertheless, as I was going through the mall, this, this fella said to me, he said, hey, come over here and try out this brand new, hitting the market, high Dow electric pulse massager. Whoa. I thought, man, you're kidding me. Now, a pulse massager, come over here. And I thought, well, I've got some time. So I walked over and I sat in the chair and he took off the, the, the pads, you know, these gel pads, and he put them one in one spot in my back. And he took the gel pad off and he put it in another spot in my back. And then he turned the electricity on, you know, and that electricity started to go through my muscles. And man, I mean, my muscles started to look like, like, like flex. And, and man, I was like, whoa, this is incredible. This is great. I mean, all the stress that I had was kind of melting away through this high Dow electric massager. I mean, I loved it. It was like being touched by an angel as I sat there in the mall. In fact, all of the time went by, and my wife finally called me and said, hey, where are you? And I said, I'm in heaven, in heaven. You got to come over here and check this out. So, so she did. She came over, and I'm like, look at this high Dow massager. Isn't this incredible? I think I actually got her to like, like agree to put the, the pads on. And when they turned the electric pulse on, she wasn't quite as impressed as I was with it. 
And so, you know, we're walking away from the mall, and, and I'm saying to Dora, I'm saying, Dora, this is an incredible, I need this, I need this, this will change my life. I mean it, I mean, think about it, I'll, I'll, I'll have a less stress level, I'll be a better husband with this. I will, I'll be a better husband, and, and I'll be a better dad without this stress level in my life, and, and, and you know, without the stress, I'll make better decisions. And, and my muscles won't be sore, so I'll exercise more. And if I exercise more, then I'll lose weight. I mean, I mean this, this, this massage is going to change my life. Now, of course, as you can see tonight, <laughs> the gift that you think is going to change your life normally does not change your life. But, but you want to know a, a truth? The perfect gift... The perfect gift is not the one that fulfills the desires that we have, but the perfect gift is one that changes our hearts. So the Apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his gift that, that we can't even describe. It's so incredible. And Paul is talking about Jesus He's talking about God in the flesh, indescribable. I mean, I can't even describe him to you. Words are not enough. And you know, the apostle John agreed with him. And so the apostle John, kind of lining up with the apostle Paul, wrote this in John chapter 1 about Jesus, when words aren't enough. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then he goes on to say, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So indescribable was this incredible gift of Jesus that, that we had to see the great love of God. We had to see the kindness. We had to see the, the care of God on our behalf that he extends towards us. So Jesus was born. I mean, the first Christmas came. And what a gift, a gift so we could see the love of God and that we could see God's love take action on our behalf. So John says this about this perfect, indescribable gift. He says, when we receive, when we receive this indescribable gift, he gives us the right to become God's children. Now, now I want you to think about this for a minute. This is what John writes in John chapter 1. It's he, continues about the indescribable gift. He says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So, I mean, I mean here's, here it is, you know, John saying, man, there's this indescribable gift and Jesus is so wonderful and he's so unbelievable. In fact, if you'll receive this gift and if you'll believe, man, you can become God's child. And, and, and just to clear up confusion for us, right, John goes on to say this, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So, so we can say that when we receive the gift of Jesus and, and we become children of God, there are so many indescribable differences that the Holy Spirit can bring to our lives. When we begin to journey with Jesus throughout life and, and, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, you know, the gift of God. And, and man, so many differences can take place in our life. And the Apostle Paul, when he brings up the indescribable gift, out of all the different gifts that, that, that come to us when we accept Christ, he speaks specifically about one. When he says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, he's talking about generosity. In that whole passage of scripture, he's talking about the source of being generous in our lives. So Paul says, generosity begins with gratitude. The more thankful we are, the more generous we are. And that's just kind of normal in life. It's normal for you in life. Like for instance, uh, you, you have somebody in your life that you appreciate so much. They've done so much for you. You are so thankful for them that pretty much whatever they ask for, you do. I mean, isn't that right? I mean, there are people in your life that if they called you at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning and said, hey, I need help. I need you to drive into inner city Philadelphia and I need you to pick me up. You wouldn't even think about it. 
I mean, you'd say, wow, this person did, man, I am so thankful for them. Man, you just automatically, man, generosity just flows from you to them because of your gratitude for them. Well, the Apostle Paul says that's the way we ought to be towards God because of his gift of Jesus. We ought to be overwhelmed with thankfulness. And in fact, when Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus, he, he said it to them this way when he's explaining like, like this wonderful gift of what Jesus brings to us. He says, for it is by grace that you have been saved. And we know what grace is, right? It's unmerited favor, freely bestowed on those who don't deserve it, right? It's just, it's just God giving us this wonderful gift, extending this gift towards us. And, and, and when we, we can't earn it. And, and, and he says it comes through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So pretty much, pretty much Paul is saying this. Paul's saying, you can't earn it, it's a gift. You can't be good enough, it's a gift. God doesn't have a scale up there where, where, where on one side all of our good acts go, and on the other side all of our bad acts go. And hey, if our good acts outweigh our bad, then, then hey, we're in, we've made it. But if our bad acts outweigh our good, uh, we just haven't made it. That's not grace. Grace is unmerited. Grace is freely given to us. That's why it's called a gift. It's a gift. Now, now you know, yesterday morning, um, I spent some time wrapping gifts. And I don't want to make myself sound better than I am because I don't wrap very many gifts. And you can identify the gifts that I wrap because they're absolutely horrendous and they, they look that way. But anyhow, you know, I'm in charge of stockings. So, Normally, I buy, you know, the gifts for the stockings. And I think the reason the stockings are often assigned to me is because they're the gag part of Christmas. You know, they're supposed to be like the funny, cute gift. And I'm not trusted with much, but I'm trusted to buy silly, meaningless things. And so, you know, so I'm in charge of the stockings. And, and so yesterday morning, you know, I'm, I'm wrapping up all the gifts for the stockings, and I'm putting them in the stockings, and, and I'm, I'm hanging them up. And at some point, probably tonight or maybe tomorrow morning, you know, our family will gather and, and, and then we'll take the stockings and we'll give it to them and they'll receive those stockings and they'll open up the gifts inside and all those wonderful gifts will become theirs. Well, you know, that's, that's sort of the way it works with gifts. I mean, gifts have to be received. Like, like I could have came tonight and I could have bought you your dream gift. I could have bought you the, the very thing in which you wanted. I could have wrapped it up in a box. I could have made it look all pretty. I could have put a tag on that gift that said, to you from me. And then when you arrived here tonight, I could have taken that gift and I could have extended it towards you. And I could have said, hey, by the way, I got you this gift and I could extend it towards you. But then in reality, you could walk right by that gift. You could get in your car in the parking lot and you could drive home. And if you did that, then, then although I prepared a gift for you, You've not received it. Do you know, that's the way that it is with gifts. That God has prepared this wonderful gift for us. That Jesus has this wonderful gift that he delivers to us. Grace, where man, we can't earn it, but he says, here it is. The gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternal life, the, the gift of meaning and purpose, the gift of a, a reason to exist. Here's this incredible gift to you. But ultimately, we have to receive it. We have to, we have to accept that gift. So, so tonight, I want to give everybody an opportunity to do that. So if you bow your head and you close your eyes for just a minute, I'm going to say a word of prayer. And you can pray after me if, if you desire to. But, but it's important that the Father hears in your own words that you want to receive the gift that he's prepared for you. That you believe that Jesus is who he said he is. And, and that you recognize your deep need for his grace and forgiveness in your life. Jesus, we love you, Lord, and we thank you that you became flesh. And Lord, even in this moment, as, uh, as we acknowledge that you are who you say you are, tonight in this moment, we believe, Lord, we believe that your death on the cross is sufficient for, for our sin and our wrongdoings and, and our failures and our shortcomings. And Lord, right now, we embrace the gift that you have eternal life, the gift of forgiveness that you extend towards us. We we turn from our own thoughts about it and we, we turn to yours. And, and Lord, we thank you so very much for the wonderful gift, Lord, that you offer us. 
And Lord, right now we receive that. Lord, continue to work in our hearts and continue to work in our lives. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, you know, when you begin to journey with Jesus through life, when you've received his gift of grace and forgiveness, and you begin to journey with him, there's so many wonderful differences the Holy Spirit makes in your life, and we would love for you to journey with us. So we, you know, extend ourselves and all of the opportunity, our pastors to you, to journey with you through life and grow together in our relationship with the Father. Well, you know, one thing that we do every Christmas Eve is, uh, is, is express our gratitude towards the Father. Because when we were spiritually in poverty, he delivered for us and met our need with his indescribable gift. And so one of the things we like to do is, is we, like to, we like to be generous because of our gratitude towards God. And, and we pick a project. You know, one, one Christmas Eve, we put in water wells. Uh, another Christmas Eve, we provided shoes for, for those who didn't have shoes. And, and tonight... Tonight, we're going we're gonna to give you an opportunity to show your gratitude to be generous towards a ministry that's an extension of our church, the Village Norristown. And you're going to watch a video in just a moment with, uh, with Megan Brooks, who's the director of the Village Norristown, and, uh, and, and listen to that. And, and in your program, there's an envelope that says the Village Norristown, and if you'd like to give a gift tonight towards the Village Norristown, you can do that. After the video is over, the ushers will come to receive the offering. Let's watch the video and see the great work that's happening at the Village Norristown. The Village Norristown, we strive to show families living in Norristown God's love through many different programs and initiatives. We meet families where they are and partner with them to make sure that they are seen, heard, and loved. Just a few of the ways that we meet these families' needs are through changing families' economic opportunities, bridging educational gaps, providing a safe place, and providing positive role models. Our number one goal is to use these tools to lead our families to the hope that can be found in Jesus Christ. The initial way that we connect with families in Norristown is through meeting physical need, whether through the after-school program, which allows parents to work, through our adult classes, which enhance opportunities, or through the provision of physical resources. These are great ways to show our families love and to get families involved in the Village Norristown. Once families are connected, we believe that education is an important tool in life transformation. Many of our kids are behind academically, and many of our parents are overwhelmed due to a lack of educational resources. We bring hope to our families through tutoring and literacy help in the after-school program as well as English, computer literacy, and GED help offered for adults. Every time that I come to the after school program, um, I, I learn a lot more here with all the volunteers. Este, abierto como para aprender más después de clases. Y la clase de inglés, si tú puedes aprender a hablar inglés, ¿cómo puede cambiar tu vida? En mucho, porque me puedo yo comunicar con las demás personas en mi trabajo. En, puedo yo no depender de otra persona como para llevar a mi hijo al doctor, como ir a la escuela. I couldn't find another program like this in Norris Town. It's important to us that in all of our offered programs, there is an understanding that the Village Norris Town is a safe place. This means we offer a building where kids and parents will feel loved and heard, where anyone is welcome and can bring the curveballs that life throws at them, knowing that they will be met with love and assistance. Here in the after school program, I get to like just let out my regular self and I get to have fun. This after school program is a very safe place for kids to come learn about Jesus, about other kids, and to do their homework and to help others. Finally, at the Village Norristown, we aim to provide positive role models for a rising generation. We have kids enter into our programs with a wide range of stories. For each of them, we want to instill the hope and opportunity that comes with choosing a Christ-centered life. At the Village Norristown, we want to build our children into strong spiritual leaders. A lot of our kids come from broken homes, so it's difficult for them to find strong spiritual mentorship. Having the ability to interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis helps us to shape their lives and share the gospel with them as they enter their teenage years. Our hope is that as they leave this program, they can share their faith boldly with their friends and family that we might not have access to. Um, my favorite thing about the Africa program is that we get to help each other. Um, that we learn about God and we do lots of good things here and we make friends. While the programs and classes and relationships that have been built to meet these goals are important, 
They are simply stepping stones to meet our true purpose at the Village Norristown, which is to lead families to Jesus Christ. While we can meet temporary needs for our families, a relationship with Jesus is the only thing that will meet eternal needs. Thank you for partnering with us by volunteering your time and through your generous financial support.